Ever since I was a child, I felt like God himself had spat me forth to land on this earth and in some way transform it. Why did he make you a woman then? For comedy, I guess. The Great is the story of Catherine the Great and her rise from a young woman who gets into an arranged marriage with Peter, Emperor of Russia, arrives, realises she's married to a madman and decides she's going to take the court of Russia. On a period show, the costume and the production design and the hair and makeup become a huge part of the show. The production design didn't have to be faithful to the reality of the times. It had to be much more faithful to the characters. The sets transport you to another world. Every detail is there. The wallpaper, the gold flecks. It's these incredible sets that are kind of also broken down and kind of represent the kingdom that we're in that's not fully looked after or taken care of. It's kind of one, one big house party gone out of control a little bit. Much of what we've done has been filmed here on huge sets, which are brilliantly designed, full of detail. When I first read the script, I was like, how are they going to do this? Because there's the grandeur of the palace and the opulence. Just looking at the studio, we are in East London, and I still sometimes can't get my head around how they've created it. One of the stages is the grand hallway, and that's the one that took 11 weeks to build, and that we basically used the whole of the golden leaf and golden paint in England with important furniture. We had them reupholstered. The candelabras, we hired all the candelabras available in the UK, France and Belgium. We definitely keep that contemporary feeling going as much as we possibly can because I think it's what enables you to break down the barrier that can sit between an audience and an idea in a period world. It obviously is a very period piece, but we haven't been absolutely strict to the period. The main way of sort of looking at it and changing it is really the, the choice of fabric. You'll see that we're wearing like the shapes of the clothing at the time, but maybe a slightly modern twist on it. So I've got these pretty wacky trousers that are like a brown shiny print, which is pretty funky. We have a beautiful wedding outfit. Myself and Elle wearing kind of these sparkling silver, very grand outfits. Elle has, for instance, a hoodie that she wears, which is actually oddly period accurate, but it has the kind of looseness and casualness that lets you feel like you're talking to a contemporary woman rather than the Empress of Russia. May I offer you a macaroon? I've lost my fingers. I'll just pop it in your mouth. <laughs> it's pistachio. She's a very different person, I guess, at the end of the series to the woman she was at the beginning. It's beautiful how Emma has shown her growth in the beginning of her being in the lighter blues and no jewelry and kind of more naked and bare and very sharp line silhouettes. Then slowly, as she sort of gathers strength and she starts changing, then her palette gets a little bit more fun. They're always building things with an eye to the character. Some things are really true, like they did wear wigs as hats because they didn't know that wigs were supposed to be pulled down to on your head properly. Empress, it is the latest from Paris. You recognise it, no doubt. I recognise it as special. We looked into ways to show that they're wearing wigs which wouldn't be distracting. So a lot of the time we show their hairlines underneath, there's always hair poking out underneath. The boys take them on and off, they just leave them on the tables, they use them as props. There's layers and layers of work that goes into creating our characters. We were able to develop something that looks unpolished, realistic, but also decadent. We were able to create a world that is really interesting visually. It's all the little details that make a thing really live, so we just want to do it justice. There's a way of things here. I'm beginning to see that.